my literatures. So October has started. It's fabulously cold here in California. Okay, it's not cold. So it's not cold for you possibly in the north. It is cold for us here in the desert. So I actually was wearing my sweater earlier today, but right now I'm so hot. It's I've been running around um, getting ready for this evening. So it is uh, a little toasty in my office today. So last week I didn't stream. I am sorry for that. I had totally meant to. I was on a quilting retreat with my mom and my sister and I'm, I made a quilt. So um, it's not quite done. I actually have to quilt the thing here. See? Yay. I know it's pretty, right? And it's got little, it's got little typewriter keys on it and it's got, um, it had typewriters. Yeah. It has like little typewriters on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. See little typewriters. Isn't it cute? I totally love this. My mom and I go to this quilting, um, like this big quilt show every year in January. And this particular, um, it was a kit. So they just gave me the pieces and I had the pattern. So I just cut everything out and sewed it together. Got it square on the first try. Yep. I'm pretty proud of myself. Anyway, that's what I did for three days straight. It took me that long to make a quilt top and now I have to quilt it. That is a project for another day actually probably gonna pin it tomorrow with my mom so we'll see if, how well that goes I have lots of stuff I got going on tomorrow um, including podcast stuff probably with uh, Shatona and C.R. Rowanson getting ready for NaNoWriMo for uh, those who are not familiar National Novel Writing Month or otherwise known as NaNoWriMo starts November 1st so we're gearing up for that I will be working on a story I on the back burner um, if I'm not done with Spilled Ink um, by that point. So we'll see. But I have another story called Union Troubles, which is a, uh, not an urban, I guess it's an urban fantasy. But um, it, it's kind of funny and it has all sorts of really cool fantasy characters in it. And I really love it and I want to finish it. So we'll get, I'll probably work on that this year. Um, so... I finished out September for Write a Story Challenge, and we're going to do the same thing for this month. Although, I think what I'm going to do is instead of doing, like, uh, four stories, I think I'm going to do one story. I'm going to still break it up into seven pieces, so I'll probably do two, two sections a week. Well, I've got three weeks left, so I'll do, like, three sections a week. And then uh, that way I can work at more on one story. We'll see how that goes, right? So... I'm going to go ahead and pull those now because I want to get to the fountain pens here in a minute because I have some things I want to share with you. Um, I had some questions from some friends, so I thought I'd answer it on live Facebook. So, all right. So the genre for this month is, well, I hope it's a good one. So I, I didn't put anything back in the bag. So whatever is gone, it's gone. Let's see. My genre. Oh, I can't use this one. It says Western. That's what my friends gave me last time. Oops. All right, I'll do this one instead. What is this? Oh, it says Urban Fantasy. Yay! All right, so I'm going to show you. No, it's backwards. Sorry. Urban Fantasy. All right, a subgenre of fantasy in which the narrative has an urban setting. Okay, I can do that. That sounds like fun, huh? All right, so now I'm working on setting. Okay. So here we go. Setting, setting, setting. The setting is on a deserted island. How can you do it on a deserted island? An urban? I don't know. Should I change it? Should I keep it? On a deserted island. Okay. Ah, it just says deserted island. It doesn't say what type of island, right? So if it's a city on an island and it's deserted, why? Okay. So I guess that's where the fantasy part comes in, right? All right. Plot. Here we go. Yeah, my, my bags are falling apart. All right, let's take a look here. Put that there. All right. Oh, I just ripped it in half. I, I didn't mean to do that. So a man who manufactures custom in soap and sells it online has gossip spread about him that he has to... Has, oh, he has a taste for children... 
How does the man react when he hears the gossip? Oh, that's awful. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know if I like that storyline. <sighs> okay, so I guess I get to work with that as an urban urban fantasy in on a deserted island. So, yay, pedophilia. I know pedophilia, yay. Um, as an urban fantasy on a deserted island. So, if I can't do it, nobody can, right? All right. So, um... So a friend of mine, Petra, hi Petra, had asked me uh, some time ago what were some good uh, 50 to $100 pens, so or $150 pens, um, fountain pens. So if you are looking at a fountain pen that is above $50, you probably already have the basics. You probably already have probably a um, a Pilot Metropolitan, you might have a Lemmy Safari, you've probably gotten a couple of Gin Haos off of eBay. Um, you might have a Twisby Echo. So these are all pens that are typically under $50. I think the Echo runs, is about $50, $55. Anyway, if you've got those, then you're already familiar with some of the terminology as well as some of, uh, the differences between the pens. If you're not familiar or you want, um, some, uh, like a, a background on beginner fountain pens, I have a really great guide on my website. If you go to pickyunpen.com forward slash fountain pens, uh, you'll find the top five beginner fountain pens um, list that I have. So you can go ahead and watch, uh, read that later if, uh, if you want a, a primer on it. But for people who are ready to move on to some more expensive pens, um, there's unlike the beginner pens, there's no set you know, there's no set list. There's so many pens that fall into the fifty to hundred and fifty dollar range that you can pretty much purchase anything within that range and probably be pretty happy. Uh, some of the ones that I personally have are a um, I have a vanishing a pilot vanishing point. I actually have the um, the blue purple one. It was a special edition from a couple of years ago. Uh, that one was probably a little over $150, I think, because it was a special edition. Um, they have a new one out, it's red and pink, and I want it so badly. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I'm looking, oh, I have a Parker Vacuumatic, I have a couple of those. Um, I, now the Parker Vacuumatic is a, is a vintage pen, uh, they were created in the 40s and 50s. And uh, you can get them on eBay restored for about ninety to a hundred dollars. Usually, uh, it just depends on um, on who who did it for you. Now you can pick them up that are not restored; they're sold as is, and you can have it restored for you. If you go that route, I suggest using uh, Danny Fudge at therightpen.net. He restores all my pens for me, and he does a really great job. So another one would be an Esterbrook. Esterbrooks are these really cool, they were like these, um, not quite throwaway pens, but they were just like just like the average Joe pen uh, from the, I wanna say like the 30s, 40s, maybe the early 50s. And um, what was really cool about them was that they have something like 25 interchangeable nibs. So if you want a flex, if you wanted a broad, if you wanted a fine, if you wanted um, an oblique, they had a huge variety of nibs. And they you can still find them. There's still things called new old stock where it's the nib that's never been used. It's still in the box. So it's old. They don't make them anymore, but it's never been new, used. So it's new old stock. So you can get, um, so you can pick up an Esterbrook for about, I don't know, boy, the Prices have gone up. They've changed quite a bit since I started collecting them. And um, I want to say the Esterbrooks go for, depending on what kind of condition they're in, from $25 to $50. And then if you need it restored, you add another $25 to $30 on top of that. And if you want a really good nib, like in the 2000s or, no, not the 2000s, the 9000s, then that'll cost you anywhere from $50 to $75. So, you can get a restored Esterbrook with a 
and OK Nib, uh, one of the 2000s for about 50 to $60, depending on who's been restoring it. So, um, but that is if you're into vintage pens, and I am, I, I really love vintage pens. Um, I think they are a marvel of engineering, I still do. So a few others, a Lamy 2000 probably run you between 50 to $150, depending on where you get it. Um, a Pilot Falcon, I don't own one. I, I have written with one. I uh, went to the fountain pen shop in Monrovia, California. It's a fabulous little hole in the wall shop. I love it. I love going there, I go every year. And they have a Pilot Falcon, and I kick myself every time for not purchasing it. I think he was selling it for like $130, and it had this beautiful soft nib. So the Japanese pens have a, a different rating scale for their nibs than the German German nibs. So uh, they have actually a soft, um, so you have like a, 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 a extra fine, fine, and then there's like a soft, between fine and medium and medium and broad, I think. There's like a soft medium, I think. Anyway, um, it has just a little bit of give. Just a little bit, it's not a flex, but just a little bit of give. So it, it creates a nice writing experience. And um, it was, it was beautiful. It was really nice to write with. So um, a Twisby uh, 580 is another good one for that range. So mostly, it isn't so much which pen I should buy. You know, don't don't necessarily look at um, like brand names or what everyone else is buying. There's certain things that you personally need to look at, okay? So first, think about aesthetics. Does it come in the color I want? You'd be surprised at how important that can be. Um, does it have um, a flat cap or is it rounded? Does it look like a cigar or is it flat on top and bottom? That can be important too. Is it completely cylindrical or does it have, um, is it, you know, got sides on it like an octagon? Um, it's how wide is the barrel, you know, around? How wide is it around? And how long is it? Because if you have small hands like I do, really big pens are really hard to hold. Um, as conversely, really skinny pens I can't hold either because I have, you know, arthritis in my hands. So. Uh, tiny pins are really hard for me to hold, which is why I don't like fix. But that's a totally different story. I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, another thing would be nib size. Some people like really thick lines. Some people like really, really tiny, thin, spidery lines. So you have to know what your preference is. And if you're not sure, if you use gel pens, it can kind of give you an idea of... Um, the thickness of line that you like. So if you have a gel pen and it's a 0.7 millimeter and that's the one you like the most, you're probably going to be looking at um, a medium in Japanese nibs or a fine in uh, German nibs. So you just have to know, you have to know your own preferences when you go in because if you know these things, you can narrow down which pens you're going to like. So if you like really fat lines, Japanese pen, although they do come in broads and triple broads and whatnot, they're, most people purchase them because they have very thin, fine lines. And so that may not, you may want to look more towards the German pens. Um, and both sides have their, their good and bad sides. So uh, it just depends on what you want. Um, I have a cheat sheet here. So and another, another thing is, do you want a modern pen? Things that, you know, that were... That were created after the 50s or do you want a vintage pen that was created before the 50s and I and I say that about the 50s because around the 50s and 60s that's when um, the disposable pen became popular so and that's really like the decline of the fountain pen started around that time so um, I like both and so but my if I had to give oh man I don't know if I could give up some of my fountain pens I really like my my vintage pens um, my modern pens, some of them hold more ink, but the I have flex nibs on my vintage pens. So it just, it depends on what you want to write with. And that's the other thing. What kind of nib do you want? Do you want something that is hard as a nail and has no give? Or do you want to do a lot of calligraphy and maybe Spencerian or copper plate? In that case, well, if you're doing copper plate and Spencerian, you're very serious about it, you're not going to use a fountain pen. You're going to use a dip pen. But... For those people who like a lot of flex in the writing, then you would definitely want something with a gold nib that has a lot of flex in it. 
it's always going to be a vintage pen or a vintage nib at the very least. So there's lots of things that you, you need to really think about when you start looking at pens. Now, I have a few favorites and there's a couple that I keep with me at all times and I'm going to, I'll show them real quick. So this is my little knock case, right? Um, N-O-C-K. They make these pen cases. Mine's blue. I got them. I bought it from a guy off of um, uh, the fountain pen, um, the fountain pen group on Facebook, and now I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I got it for like twenty bucks. It's they don't make this particular case anymore, but there's a few things I keep in here at all times. One, I have a Lamy. So this is my Lamy. Um, this is the lilac, the dark lilac. It was um, this was the special edition from. Not this year, but last year. And I have a, I have the cartridges and I have a bottle of ink to go with it. So um, hopefully I won't run out anytime soon. Um, another one is, this is my Pilot Custom 823. It is, um, it has a huge ink capacity and I can, and I've actually run out of ink a couple of times because I write so much with it. Um, I love this thing. It's got a weird plunger mechanism in it. It's really fascinating to fill it because it works totally different than anything else I have. So this was a gift from my husband. Thank you, sweetie. Um, another one I have that I keep with me all the time now is, um, is a Waterman Kareen. And it's got a gold nib. It's got a gold hooded nib. It's kind of different. Um, and uh, it writes very smoothly. I don't I try not to take it out of the house because this is one of my more expensive pens and I don't want to lose it. Um, one of my newer pens, isn't this cute? It's all pink and it's got this cool cracked ice look to it. So this is from the Wood Pen Shop Company. Um, he had done a very cool, um, I'll show that to you. He had done a Kickstarter and so now I keep it in my my pen case and fill it with uh, noodlers, black swans, and Australian roses. Matches it perfectly. So, yes, and I'm one of those people who actually matches their ink to their pen, so I try to keep a variety of colors in my in my case. Um, another one I keep in there is my, not that one, here it is. This is my Parker Vac. It's got it's one of the green stripes, and I right now it's got it's got something green in it, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head might be avocado by private reserve I'm not sure um, so and I have a couple over here and I do have this one now this one oddly enough this is a Jinhao um, I forget which one it's one of the newer ones it's a uh, it's in the 900 range I think anyway it's got a fairly decent nib on it for something that comes out of China and that's only two dollars and it has a large ink capacity so I like keeping this one on hand so if someone wants to borrow a fountain pen I give them this one because it's not going to kill me to lose it. Um, but those are the ones I keep on hand. And I always rotate my pens out, change them out every couple of months. And um, I keep the ones that I use all the time in this case. And this is a 100 pen case. I don't keep 100 pens in here. But um, I do keep a, quite a few of the ones that I rotate in and out a lot. Um, and then, so it's double-sided. It's, it's actually meant, um, it's actually meant for pencil, like, like coloring pencils, but I keep my pens in here. And the other case I have is this one. And this one has, and it's not, it's not full. I know it looks like it is, but it's not. But, um, so those, like, those are my beginner um, Chinese pens, right? So I don't use those as much um, because I've kind of moved on from them. But I have quite a few. Um, those are some of my vintage pens that I don't use as often. Uh, mostly because I just, I literally don't have the time to use them all. And here's some more. Um, and I, so like this one, all right, so like I was talking about um, aesthetics and mechanics earlier. So this one is possibly one of my most beautiful pens. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? My mom bought this for me um, from Roman's book, uh, bookstore there in Pasadena. It's like the oldest bookstore in California. And they have this really wonderful stationery section. 
So I got this. It's a cross, and it's I think I want, to, I want to say it's like a black pant. The the pattern is black pants, but I can't remember. And it's a beautiful pen. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just so thin that I can't hold it um, for any length of time. And it makes me really sad because I would love to use this thing on a regular basis, and I can't. So remember that when you are choosing pens, right? You got to choose things that are going to work for you. So, and I have quite a few in here. I, I still use my preppies. Um, here's my, this is a Twisby Echo for those who are not familiar with them. This is a great pen, but I broke the nib on it and I haven't replaced the nib yet. Um, and it's got a huge ink capacity. It's like five milliliter, milli, milliliters, yes. I think that's it. Anyway, and I've got a few more in here. So it's not full, but it's getting there. Um, anyway, and I keep this in a cabinet on its side so they all lay flat. Um, now I do have um, Viscontis. My Viscontis are put away in their own boxes. So, um, and I've, I, have a, I have a few more that are put away. I have a beautiful Visconti Venus. My husband got it for me and I keep dropping it and I'm afraid to use it anymore. Otherwise, I'm going to break it. So, um, anyway, those are my pens. Um, if you want to know more about pens, the Goulet Pen Company has a really great series on YouTube about the different kinds of pens, what to look for in a pen, how to choose a pen, um, more than it than this, right? They go into a great, great detail. So this is just a broad overview of, of what you should look for in a pen that's $50 to $150. Actually, it's for any pen, you need to look at the aesthetics and the mechanics and then move from there. And so... Um, I'll link to their YouTube channel below in the comments. So, okay, so I've got my marching orders for the month for the Write a Story Challenge. Yay me! Um, next week I will be out of town. I'm going to um, a women's writing retreat with Shatona Havoc, and I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if how well I will be able to. Um, I'll be able to live stream the I know there's going to be internet but there's no um there's no the the phone is spotty so I'm hoping I'll be able to hook up through the internet to do my live stream we'll see if not I'll just record it early and then post it for you guys to watch um it just won't be live so we'll see okay so until then you can catch me online at pickyunpen.com or you can follow along with uh all my postings on Instagram at um, April.Hayman and over on Twitter at Picky and Pen. Of course, always like my page on Facebook at Author April Heyman. So until next week, my literatures, bye.